One of my favorite things to do is just to hear coaches and, and their search and what they're looking for. And while we were preparing for this, I asked both of you to bring two questions to ask one another. And so what I'd like to do is, Gino, I'd like to throw it to you first. Uh, what would be one question you would want to ask Brad? I think one thing, like when you're a college coach and you play, if you go to the Final Four and you play 38, 39 games, and then all of a sudden you're in a position where when you took the job, you know pretty much your first two or three years, you're going to lose that many games in one year. It's like going 0 oh, and 39 in college. Psychologically, how do you understand that while you're going through it and not get used to it? Because winning and losing is habitual. And how do you not let it yeah. keep you from, keep your spirits up? Yeah, that's a good question. In those, in those years where we went to the Final Four, we had 100 plus practices and we played 38 games or whatever it was. This year we played 100 games and we had 56 practices, right? So it's a totally different, totally different deal. Um, but one of the things that I was really dead sold on when I left Butler was that our culture was really, really strong. And I believed it stemmed from the fact that we didn't veer off of what we thought was important from a competitive character standpoint. And we also were really dialed in, you know, as a whole organization from the top down, way above me, to just focusing on the progress, focusing on making sure that we are getting the most out of ourselves, maximizing this experience every single day. And so I thought the process looked the same when I took the Celtics job, but I knew it was going to be more challenging early on because, you know, we had just traded two Hall of Famers and Jason Terry. So not only two Hall of Famers, but a tremendous leader and a future coach in Jason Terry. And, and now um, that was all going to be tested. Like, am I really about the process? Am I really about that idea that it is about getting better every day, that I'm not evaluating the result, but what we're doing to move forward regardless of circumstance? And we were really lucky because we didn't, you know, we lost the, the first year, um, you know, like you said, like it was just brutal. It was really tough because we were also in a ton of those games late. And so every one of them is gut-wrenching. And then the second year, by the time All-Star break hit, we ended the year and we were winning and we were back in the playoffs and, and have been since. And, um, but it, what it validated to me was that the, this process is the same, whether you're, whether you're great or moving on towards being great. And um, that it does take a daily commitment. You can't get off track on it. And, and we've really tried to say this is not about what happened yesterday regardless of result. This is about today. This is about getting better. This is about making our next step to, to make sure we hold ourselves to that standard. And I think that that's been really healthy for me because, you know, when was, how, how long has it been since you've lost 29 games? Like, are we in 20 years? 29 games? Yeah, 20. When was... If you, if you counted up all your losses from the last 20 years, would you have lost 29 games? How old are you? 40. <laughs> Might have been before you were born. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so like... It's, I can't remember. I'll be yeah, honest yeah, yeah. I can't remember. We, lost, we were the first seed in the East this year. We lost 29 games. I know. So like, that's 29 times to flip out, to ride the low of the emotional yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. I would and it's not crazy. just for me. It's for our management, our ownership, our players, right. their families, everybody. And, but that's why it's so important to have people at the top, which we do, that don't ride that roller coaster, that are totally committed to this idea of if we're, if we're getting better and we're all on the same page, good things are going to happen and we're going to give ourselves a chance to be sustainable and give ourselves as many shots as possible at this. And that, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish, obviously, but that's the long-winded answer. It's a great the answer. process doesn't change whether, you know, um, if you're truly committed to it. What would be your question for Gino? That would drive me crazy. Similar, yeah. <laughs> Similarly, oh. and I think it's probably a similar answer, but every time I turn on the TV, UConn's up 
by a lot, and if they're not, you're, you're watching that lead quickly ascend. How do you, maybe it goes back to the intrinsic motivation, maybe it goes back to the process of what your expectations are, how do you consistently play to that level? And you talked about it a little bit with like people want to see, when they come to stores, they want to see something unique and different and it's got to be something bigger than just the result. But how do you consistently do that month to month in a basketball season, year to year? Um, I, I noticed it the very first time, uh, probably uh, with the great team that we had in 1995, that first team that won a championship. And they played in a way that made me and everybody watching them go, wow, that's pretty amazing that they, you know, that a team can play like this. And I remember that experience of that team. And whenever we didn't play like that, the very few times, I remember, and I've used this all the time, I remember saying to them, all right, why are we up 25 right now? This is during the timeout. Like right now, why are we up 25? Is it because the other team that we're playing really, really stinks? Or is it because we're just that good and we just execute and play harder and we just do everything better than everybody else? Because if it's a 25 point lead just because they're not any good, then we're just a little bit better than somebody who's not any good. And is that what we're in this for? Or are we trying to be something special? Mm -hmm. And then we'll go out and we'll go on a 12-0 run or something like that, you know. So it's for me, it's always reminding them at practice that the game, the game is to be played a certain way. And it's not, it's not possible to play that way for 40 minutes, every minute of every day, every practice. It's not possible. But I think the pursuit of finding out how long can we sustain this is something that I pose to them all the time. Yeah, that's good. How long can we sustain this? Because, I, I, and just when I think it's faltering, I'll go, you know guys, this is about the time when regular teams, this is when they start to fall. So we're not a regular team, right? No, all right, let's go. There you go, and last question for Brad. You know, when you're in college, when you're coaching in college, um, the kids that you're dealing with are really kids. 17, 18 years old, 22 when they leave maybe. And you have an opportunity to, to kind of mold their development to a certain extent because you're with them more than you're with your own kids. So now you come into a situation where we're still few. basically 17, 18, yeah, 19. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's getting that way, yeah. right? Yeah. But with few exceptions, you're dealing with adults who have already ingrained, this is how I do things, this is how I, I like to practice, this is how I like to prepare, boom, boom, boom. So now you're coaching adults, mm -hmm. so to speak. What's the biggest adjustment that you've had to make from coaching kids that Nobody does this, but I mean, hang on every word. He, he wouldn't be the great coach that he is if he didn't have that. To adults who might be a little bit skeptical at times. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're transitioning to the NBA, I think that that's a major question. And the answer that I've always tried to do is, it's, I'm going to I'm going to be myself, you know. And, and if it's not good enough, that's fine. Um, so the one thing that we try to do, that we always try to do, is invest in everybody with a great deal, whether we think they're going to be there for a month or whether we think they're going to be there for 10 years. I think every, I've been, I'm asked a lot, what's the difference between coaching college players and pro players? Every good one wants to be coached. There's no sure. difference. There is no difference. Good players want to be coached. And, um, and I think the great ones want to be coached even harder. And the one thing that I think maybe you do a little bit more at this level is, and certainly depending on their age and, and where they are in their age and stage, but you seek their input on what they truly want to get better at, while at the same time being able to communicate, okay, but this is what you do to help us win. And this is what's going to get you on the floor so that you can add value to winning. And so I would say that that's the, 
the way that we approach it. Um, but I, I don't see as much difference as maybe even I would have anticipated. Um, there are challenges, there's no question with, the, with pros from the standpoint of what we talked about with, you know, there are certain situations where you don't know how long guys are gonna be there. And so it, it changes up quickly. And so to create that sense of purpose, you really have to have a special group of guys that are truly committed to one another and realize that team achievement is how your legacy begins. And that's what, um, that is the kind of the great driver uh, of what you're trying to accomplish. And if your team does well, obviously, good things happen for everybody. Last one for Dino. How do you get away? Are you able to get away? Is it 365 no, days? No, it, it's, it never has been for me. Um, and I, I hope it never, I, it never will be. Uh, I'm kind of towards the, the downside of my career now uh, at UConn anyway. Um, I've always tried to separate my personal life, my home life from my professional life. That's my basketball career. That's what I do for a living. That's what I love to do. But that's not all I am. So whenever I don't have to be, I am not. I'm away from it completely. And by going away from it completely, when I come back to it, I'm ready to go. So I don't get up every morning for 12 months of the year living, eating, breathing the game. Because just like a player who won't put a ball down, I think after a while you just become stale and it doesn't mean anything as much to you anymore. You don't have any new ideas. Nothing's fresh, it's just old. So I try to, when the season ends, yeah, it's college, it's different. You know, you, know, you still got kids in school, and then you got summer school, and then you, know, you got to recruit all the now time. Now you can work them out yeah. all summer, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and, and like we've chosen not to do that. Is know? that right? So yeah. we say, look, kids are in summer school, June. Everybody's in school for five weeks. Okay, so in June, while you're here, we might as well get something done. You're in the weight room, you're doing conditioning, doing individuals, none of this four on four, three on three, none of that. And then the minute July 3rd or whatever comes around, gone. And we don't see them again until the end of August. So when they come back, they're raring to go. You know, they can't wait to get started. Same with the coaching set. And I've always felt that's important because you need, a, you need another life. Like at my house, if you, if you were to come to my house, there's not one thing that you would see in my home that would lead you to believe I'm the coach at the University of Connecticut or that we've won anything or that we have any championships. Zero. I keep that all at school in my office, in the locker room, in the conference room, wherever. Because I'm home, I'm home. I didn't want my kids growing up going, yeah, I'm a coach or I'm a son. And, you know, we have this, 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 and this. So I, I've, I've tried really hard to keep those two things separate. It wasn't as easy in the beginning because you're trying to build something and we're like entrepreneurs you know like we have this little business that we're running we're responsible for all these players coaches trainers you know whatever the case may be they all work for brad he might think that they work for the owner but in 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 in, in essence they they work for brad and he's responsible to make this all work just like all these people are 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 counting on me to make it all work so i understand that but um, I, I, don't, I don't ever want it to be um, my whole life. I don't want it to be that. I, and coaching, coaching is hard. It's getting harder. But at the same time, when you get it right, it's probably never been more rewarding, right? It's a great way to end it. Thank you guys very much for this.